Welcome back to another Monday cooking show. The cooking show that has not been named. <laughs> I'm Emily Schramm and I just want to show you guys how to make healthy meals quickly. And today we are going to do one of my favorite sandwiches with a twist. I absolutely love Cubanos. There's this really great documentary. I don't know if you've seen it, Blake, but it's called The Chef. And it's like this food truck in Miami that does Cubano sandwiches. And I didn't even know what Cubano sandwiches were until I saw this. And I realized I wanted to make a gluten-free, dairy-free version of it, which is really tough because it's full of cheese and full of gluten. So um, for me, I was like, how do I get creative with this? And so today you are quite literally improvising with me on the fly. This is a meal that I would be making and will be having after we finish filming because it has all the things that I need, the Cubano, but also the right amount of carbs, proteins, fats, etc. So I'm very excited that you are here today. This is a, first and foremost, a perfect replacement for pasta. It also is a great replacement for bread. When I'm looking at building my plate and my meals, if I am working out or if I have a job that has a lot of stress, uh, I need some carbs. I try to keep people a between 100 and 150 grams of carbs every day, total. So that means at every meal, you're about 25 to 50 grams, depending on how many meals you eat. They sent me this. I'm not sponsored by them, but I'm obsessed with them. It's chickpea pasta. So it does have carbs, but it also has a ton of protein. So it's a win-win, a really great alternative to typical pasta, including whole wheat pasta. Um, and it's boiling, so I'm just gonna throw this in because that's first and foremost what we need to do. So while that's going, oh, you know what, Blake? I forgot my sage. One second. Um, I'm gonna grab my sage. So this is garden. <laughs> so this is garden sage. I love sage. It means to save in Latin. And you smell it and you just instantly feel smarter. <laughs> so what we're going to do while that is boiling is we're going to start to put the rest of the ingredients together. So I am pulling this from some creative recipes, but my own way because I don't have a lot of the ingredients. We're going to start with a little ghee and a little sage. I'm actually going to cut some of it to release some of the flavor. Somebody, <laughs> Blake, somebody commented about how my cooking skills were stressing them out, or my uh, knife skills were stressing them out. So I'm sorry if my cutting skills, they are very subpar, but when you have a sharp knife, it doesn't matter. Uh, so what you're gonna do is take a pan and just a little bit of ghee. You can also use butter, but, oh shit. Since I'm um, dairy-free, ghee uses the same concepts as butter, or the same compounds as butter, but without the lactose. So this is hearth and dram ghee. We're just gonna kind of get that going together. Um, I always do this with pasta. So some people add salt, some people just keep stirring, or you can drop heat. This is bow tie pasta. Aren't they so cute? <laughs> uh, and as this goes, we're gonna just make sure it gets a little hotter because we want it to sizzle. Uh, this is about, I wanna say for one cup, we're at 25 grams of protein and 40 grams of carbs. So one cup is perfect, but we're gonna make the whole box so we can save it for later. We're gonna get this to sizzle. I love the smell of ghee, but not all ghee. So I really like this version. Hearth and Dram, um, Tin Star Foods is also really good. So once you get that to get a little bit going, we need to think about the sauce. So for a Cubano, it's cheesy. I don't do cheese. So what do we do instead of cheese? Well, we use our handy dandy friend, coconut milk. Um, I use coconut milk quite a bit. I don't think it tastes like coconut and it uses creamy thick texture just like heavy cream would without the dairy. So my skin thanks me on the daily. So we're gonna use about half of this into that sage and butter mix. Trying to get, again, I'm, I've never done this before, but I'm trying to get a cheese consistency. Cubanos want cheese. So the thick part, we're gonna add as much of that as we can, about half the can, and then stir. That smells really good. From there, I'm gonna add some garlic. I make quite a mess. We'll use the trifecta because that's right here. 
So lots of garlic, salt, pepper. Don't be shy with spices. Remember how good they are for you. Garlic specifically, if you guys are getting into uh, fall and you're getting s sick and sniffles, fighting any sort of an infection, a little bit of garlic can go a long way. So I'm gonna let this go. To me, I'm like, okay, well, this is runny and not cheesy at all. So what can we do to thicken this up? Um, we're getting the flavors with the sage and the garlic and putting it in the coconut milk, but we still want the texture to be right for this to be a good pasta. So I took most of the thickness out of the top of this, which means I'm not gonna add any more of that. I'm gonna start thinking, what can I do to thicken this up? There's two options that I have for you guys. The first option is gonna be these amazing the only type of vegan cheese that I like. I say vegan not because I'm vegan, I say vegan because I'm dairy free. So it's a dairy free cheese that does not use coconut, uh, does not use canola oil. Any type of vegan product that has canola oil in it is just gonna have some long term damaging effects on our cells. So I'm a big believer in making sure you read your ingredients and this is Viola Life, the one that doesn't have um, any canola oil in it. And I also have been really in love with using something like this, where it's actually like a sauce, a really thick sauce, really low. It has a little bit of rice flour, but besides that, no sugar, no additives besides green chili peppers and tomatoes. And so I'm gonna add those to see if we can make it a little bit spicy like a Cubano, but also a little cheesy like a Cubano. So we'll start by slicing these. It's crazy that somebody can take coconut milk and coconut oil and turn it into cheese. But I'm not gonna fight it. You win some, you lose some. If I can make cheese out of coconut milk and coconut oil, or if I can eat cheese, because I really miss cheese. Cheese is my like absolute favorite thing. Oh my God, I've been wanting to say this. Blake, so I've been trying to get inspiration on this cooking show, and I've been watching cooking shows on Netflix and Hulu, and there is a Great Britain cooking show, and they are so nice. Why in America are we so terribly mean? Like there's literally horrible judges and critique and like all these things that are like, you're terrible, do it for time. America, chopped. It's, and then you go to Great Britain and the Britain cooking show and they're like, oh, this is really nice. You did a great job. That's what they say. There's zero critique. Like, why can't we be more like that, people? So anyway, the great, the great brand cooking show. So I'm gonna add the cheese, and then we're gonna add some hatch green chili sauce. Oh, it smells spicy. So if you don't like spicy, make sure you don't add too much. I saw a recipe from Bonds actually that used pumpkin puree. So something that's like the same consistency as this. Pumpkin would be perfect. Thicken it up. Oh, this is gonna be good. We got sage, green chili. And now I need to add some salt. Um, let me see how my pasta's doing. Oh, this is close. Gluten-free pasta tends to quick, cook really fast, I feel like. Um, so one, ooh, that's hot. Once that's almost done, now I'm gonna do that two more minutes. I'm gonna start thinking about my protein. What type of protein am I gonna add to this? Because remember, we want 25 to 30 grams at every meal we eat. There's of course pasta protein here, but we want something that's gonna be a little bit more digestible and absorbable by our body. So that's something called biological value, the BV of protein. So for a Cubano, what's typically used is chicken. So you could use ground chicken or chicken breast. I only have these two things in my fridge. So we're gonna use these. Um, this is oven roast and chicken breast. It's just simple deli meat. Again, you can always use better, but that's what I got. So I'm gonna slice this, cube this, and put it in. If I'm cooking for the whole family, remember we want each person, depending on their size, each adult to get 25 grams. So you're just kind of doing some math in your head. Can I get 50 grams if there's two adults using what protein sources I have? And you can of course count some of that protein that's in the bonza. A um, little Canadian bacon. <sighs> 
I got these from Natural Grocers. I really like these. Cube this up. I'm very curious <laughs> what this is going to taste like. <laughs> I'm excited, but it's kind of like a gourmet mac and cheese, um, which, you know, who doesn't love mac and cheese? Even my mom taught me that every meal needs protein, because even when we would have mac and cheese, we would put a can of tuna in it. And then I'm going to put those in here. So see how it like actually got cheesy? Do you see the bubble? How cool is that? I just think that's just amazing. Oh my god. This is turning out. Oh, I love when things turn out the way I want them to. <sighs> Which, let's be honest, if you have a positive attitude, that can be everything. <laughs> Okay, so then we take this, we're going to drain it, and now we get to combine, and then we're pretty much done. So let me make sure these are done, because I would really hate, oh yeah, they're done. Um, again, if you want to measure these out, depending on your carb level, a lot more if you're lifting, a lot less if you're not, but I don't believe that all carbs should be cut regardless because we need them, especially females. I'm just gonna, you know what, I think I'm gonna do about half of this because I don't wanna, I didn't do the full sauce. And then from there, here we go, let's see what happens. Oh my goodness. Oh, that was about perfect. So again, if you want it less saucy, add more pasta and have some leftovers. And then stir together. So true Cubanos, and just one of my favorite ingredients, I'm going to grab a bowl, is actually this delicious ingredient called a banana pepper. So I'm going to make a bowl, trying to divide, getting enough meat per pasta. And then from there, oh, buddy. So this little guy, pepperoncinis, or I don't know why I like get grossed out. Like I, I'm the only one eating this. So here we go. Here's my fingers in the jar. And a couple banana peppers. And since this does not have any vegetables, I'm going to add a couple of my garden peppers. These are called gypsy peppers. Didn't know what they were, but that's my heritage, so I felt obligated to get them. And then what I would do for a little bit more vegetable is just do a little side of arugula. Do a little side salad of arugula with some salt, maybe a little olive oil. Let's add some color. Oh, oh my God. Ah, and I would sprinkle a little sage, but I used it all. The Cubano pasta. I can't wait to try this. Let's try it right now, actually. I feel like that's what I have to do. I can't wait. <laughs> you can't just trust me. OK. Oh my god. This is so good. <laughs> it worked. <laughs> yes. I'll see you next Monday. <laughs>